Today on the show, man. We're going to find out who Black Panther answers to. Then we go smoke some strange. And with a little bit of iron fisting. All that and, and a lot more, man, on the mostly Marvel version of Fat Man on Batman. Welcome to Fat Man on Batman. Oh my lord, I'm Kevin Smith. Mark Bernardi. All right, man, we're making it real. We told you we were going to make it real on the podcast. We said we are going to try to do it as a show. Yeah. As a show. There's five, mo six monitors, dude. You ain't kidding. There's cameras all that's over a, the that's joint. Almost a I'm sucking in my gut, something <laughs> I never normally do. And this is the most smoke-free version of this podcast we've probably ever done. Normally, I can't even see Mark because it's so smoky. No, we're so lucid. It's weird. Yeah. And that's led to a lot of confusions. Like, for example, there's some people watching this right now that are just like, they thought we were two white guys. I know. It seems to be a, an enduring myth. that. But, uh, but, as you can see... He's black. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are the Ebony and Ivory of Geek Talk, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot to talk about. We're going to break the shows down all week long into nice 20-minute digestible bites. This section we're starting with is all uh, Marvel stuff, man. Mm. So let's uh, hit the news right off the top. Biggest biggest news of the week, I would say, uh, Mark, yeah. has everything to do with who's going to direct the Black Panther. Yes, and you know we've been talking a lot about Creed because we do like the Creed. Didn't we also fancy like? Didn't we whimsy like? You know who would be great? Seriously. And I th I think his name was brought up. I don't know if we were talking about Black Panther, but if you go back and listen to one of the other podcasts uh, that we did about it, I think. We were there before it happened. We I mean, totally We were. certainly didn't give anybody any ideas. I ain't saying that. But no, I have no influence. It was in the air, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was in the air. But you saw Creed, and you I, were talking about, like, this is the move. Dude, I mean, that Ryan Coogler is who we're talking about. He's so, like he's got such a command of both action, like mm. all the boxing stuff. The first, the first fight you see with with um, Adonis Creed mm. in the ring against a contender is all one take. Whoa! Oh, you, really? It's, yeah, one of, it's like a Birdman. It's, he opens it's one movie of those Birdman. Or Touch of Evil. Everyone forgets. Everyone's sure. like, it's a Birdman. Orson Welles did it decades <laughs> ago. But yeah, the idea of one long track shot. He, yeah, yeah. he pulls that off. He pulls it off. Like and in the ring, which is like. And there's fighting in the movie. There's right a little bit there. of fighting. <laughs> More pugilism, but still, some of this old-timey boxing. But but Black Panther, there's going to be, there better be a lot of fighting. Yeah, we saw totally. in the Civil War trailer, there's at least a lot of running fast. Totally. Yeah, it's the Tom Cruise school of special effects. <laughs> What's he going to do? He's going to run a lot, you guys. That's his jam. Tom Cruise can run like a motherfucker. Seriously. It's crazy, and man. He's like, like 78 years old. I re <laughs> I, so, I rewatched uh, JJ's um, uh, Mission Impossible, Which and there's really like good. one long shot where he's like running in China yeah. or something like that along the waterfront. Uh -huh. Where it's this, man. <laughs> he's Just like a cartoon character. It's crazy. But Black Panther, yeah, yeah, looks like he lo looks like he runs in a cruising totally. fashion, faster than Cap. Um, Ryan Coogler is being rumored. To right. direct. He's in negotiations with Marvel about directing. We all love this idea. You know, we love this idea to a point. Why? Because I, to, to a point, I sort of feel like there's there was a world, let's right. call it the 90s, in which Ryan Coogler would have come out with Fruitvale Station, would have made Creed, and then have like, I don't know, seven or eight more movies in him to find his voice. Like, you know, you know as well as anybody. Like, a filmmaker takes time. He's an artist. He's got to find his stride. Is that what I should have done? Well, I didn't realize. I feel there like was a, you'd, you know. There's a way to greatness? There's, there's a I path. just thought you lucked into it. It's like Carnegie Hall. But it's, <laughs> but it's like if he was Spike Lee. Like, yeah. let, let's pretend he had that career. Let's pretend he had really Scott's career. Or it's, I'm going to make The Duelist. I'm going to make Barry Lyndon. I'm going to, like, do these things. And then Blade Runner comes. And then Thelma Louise. And then Gladiator. Like, I got to tell you, you lost me in this conversation when you said, Spike Lee, because now I'm thinking of a Spike Lee directed Black Panther. Remember, Ooh. do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah bugging out like bu there's the whole se sequence where uh, they're talking about the shoes and they're just like Black. Pa they're holding a Black Panther comic book <laughs> and like Black Panther, eat pizza, wee pizza boy. <laughs> I would love to see Spike Lee do. I mean, it, now it, I'm crazy about that idea, but still, Ryan Coogler's Ryan the man. Coogler. And there's a there's a path that could have led Spike Lee there, like post Inside Man. Where it's like Spike makes a studio yeah, the movie. other day because I was listening <laughs> that opening song. It was a fantastic track, man. The cha -cha -cha, it was a beautiful way to open. So I was listening to that on my Spotify, and I was thinking like, man, he was in a commercial zone. Like totally. he, it looked like he was Spike was leaning toward Steven Soderbergh world, where it's just yeah. like I'm gonna keep making them one for, for me, them, one, one for, for them. So he could pull this off. Man. He could have totally, but you know, instead he made Chirac, which I hear is actually really good. But still, Ryan Coogler, Chirac. You know, Chirac. You call Chirac. Chirac. I went Chirac. <laughs> like Chi-Town. It's supposed to be like, like Iraq, right? So it's yeah. Chirac. 
We're not a little more closer to Shiraz. A little. Yeah. We're, we're having the pronunciation game. Yeah, it's weird. Don't matter. Welcome to the show. Don't matter. <laughs> we're not going to see the movie. We're hooked on phonics. And not until it comes. It's Amazon releasing it, right? Yeah. This is their first theatrical release. Yeah. I'm actually going to see that. It's movie. a whole I'm a world. big Spike Lee fan. Um, but yes, all right. I just, but I anyway, wish... why talk about fantasy movies? It's not happening. Let's talk about a movie that looks like it might happen. Yes. Ryan Coogler directing Black Yeah. Panther. Like, I just, I, I, I have faith that it's going to be good. I just, I, I fear for Ryan Coogler getting caught in the Marvel machine. Mm. You know, which, if we've learned anything from, from Joss Whedon's two movies, is that he didn't really like making those two movies. I, I can see concern, but uh, here's what I'll counter with. Mm. This was a man who, only four years ago, with a buddy, fan-fictioned up Creed. Four years later, he made it happen. People love it. It's one of the best-reviewed movies of the year. So he seems to be a quick study. Mm. Um, if he was remotely interested in this material... I'd love to see him behind the camera. I see what you're saying. Like, let him get a few more, some meat, more meat on his bones, or some more work under his belt. But so far, the work he's put out there, strong. This yeah. dude knows what he's doing. So I'd, say, you know, in a perfect world, yeah, he'd do a bunch of stuff and yeah. get to a comic book movie. But this is a better than perfect world where we could have the guy <laughs> that directed Creed directing Black Panther, and you're sitting here going, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying that'd be the best idea, my friend. <laughs> No, I mean, listen, it's, I feel like it's going to be a solid movie. I think he's a solid choice. Mm. I just don't want him to lose the edges that make him great. Uh, well thought out, sir. All right, let's hit the next thing, which is also Black Panther related. Uh, the yeah, Russo yeah. brothers have confirmed uh, that in Civil War, Black Panther never chooses a side. It says here, Black Panther is, first of all, an amazing character. We couldn't be more excited mm -hmm. to bring him to the screen for the first time. I believe this is Kevin Feige saying this. Mm -hmm. He's very central to the story. Oh, no, it's one of the Russo, Russo. brothers. Duh. Um, he's very central to the story. He comes into the story early. What's great about Black Panther in this movie is all the characters choose a side, Captain America's side or Iron Man's side. Black Panther never chooses a side. Switzerland. My name's Paul. It's between y'all. Oh, my Lord. What? Like, I go Switzerland, <laughs> and the kids watching at home are like, what's that? I've never heard of they it. They make cheese. You say something, the kids are like, I understand that, that Paul thing. It may be from the 90s, but boy, that hit home. You're absolutely right. I mean, that's the way to play it, right? Yeah, I mean, Wakanda's got to stand alone, and, you know, just that's going to be my Please let that, yeah, put that on a flag. <laughs> Wakanda's got to stand alone. Um, I read something online, too, that Martin Freeman, who's in mm -hmm. Civil War, but right. they haven't said who he's playing, mm. is apparently... Black Panther related. Ooh. Like, it's a character like, like that's going to... second gonna, cousin? Yeah. He's <laughs> my, my half-brother. <laughs> Apparently, he... I'm, I'm, and this could be wrong, and I've read it in one of those articles online where they're guessing as well, but I think he's the Wakandan liaison Ooh, like to the ambassador. United States. Yes. And mm -hmm. so he figures... They, they put him in a civil war because uh, Chala's in it. To Chala. Right. But uh, Everett Ross, is that who it is? Who's that? He's the character, so that's who they think he's playing as Everett Ross? Yeah. There Ooh, you go. Related to Thunderbolt Ross? Look at, that, look at that, man. Never get that on the old stone <laughs> fat man on Batman. <laughs> like facts coming at you. Yeah, good information happening. Uh, so <laughs> he, apparently it's rumored he might be playing Everett Ross. So he would play a bigger role in the standalone Black Panther movie. Uh, I saw some people online theorizing that Martin Freeman might be playing the Red Skull, which I was like, why wouldn't they go back yeah, to... We got one. Yeah, they already got a guy. But that reminded me, I was like, they still got to bring that dude back. Ooh. They kind of tossed him in, you know, in Captain mm. America First Avenger. They haven't really touched it since, but he's out there somewhere. How old is the Red Skull? I mean, they have touched it a little bit in, in Captain America uh, mm. Winter Soldier. Mm. Remember, there's the big computer dude. Right. Um, Anam Zola. Oh, I love that. That was I love that scene so much. That was so much out of like an old Bond movie or spy movie or just like I'm going to tell you my whole evil plan yeah. and the room is going to self destruct. And he was a fucking <laughs> computer on old like like the ColecoVision Adam computer drives. <laughs> that was it's such a cool flourish. It reminds me of that uh, that chunk in Raiders of the Lost Ark where it's literally we're going to spend ten minutes just laying story pipe. What happens? The two FBI guys come in. They drop a big book on a table and they just tell us the plot. Mm. And that's the last time you have to stop for the plot. That's why you get it, Mark Bernard on a show, ladies and gentlemen. Go to that two shot. You know why? Because he lays story pipe. You heard it here first. Talks Long, about writing in the sexiest way. Long and lean. Um, well, how do you feel about the Black Panther uh, being neutral? Makes I mean, sense. It, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, like his story, they're saying he's central to this story, but his story is his movie. Yeah. You know, so like That's he, true. he shouldn't have to pick a side here. Especially, yeah. Especially, he's, he's no, a, I don't know. Like, do you, you wouldn't want that dude coming in and going, <laughs> which white guy's side yeah, do they, I want to be on? These are white people problems. <laughs> <laughs> I, got no, I got no business being in here. Going back to Wakanda. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, Doctor Strange, let's move on to Doctor Strange. Yeah. Man. Apparently there's some Doctor Strange 
concept art. This is for reals? For realsy reals? That's meant to be Cumberbatch. Doctor Strange the Magnificent. That is? It's real, it's real. Wow, man. Uh, all right, there's your first look at what could be Benedict Cumberbatch. We got 10 minutes left. Yeah. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. I mean, they showed Looking some like, of this. Is there only one or is there another one? They showed some of this Show at D23. Me more. There was one? I didn't even get, I didn't even get half hard. I was like, oh, yeah. and it was so fleeting. It was just it was a little, like, nipple. Oh, there it is again. Oh. <laughs> Look, man, they're doing the cape and the collar. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. You give me the cape, collar, and the eye of Agamotto, I don't care what Everybody else is wins. wearing. Everybody wins. They're not going to drop the ball. I mean, I've seen reports where they keep saying, like, Baron Zemo ain't going to wear a mask in, in mm. Civil War. But I don't think it's more important to anybody beyond Marvel, I think it's the most important to Marvel, I guess is what I'm saying, to have their characters look as close to their characters as possible. Yeah. Historically, they've done a really good job of it. As you see in the Civil War trailer, Falcon's starting to look like Falcon. I know. The color scheme they is there, yeah. So, you know, maybe you get to a place where, where Doctor Strange, you know, looks exactly like the comic book because they care so much. They're yeah. not going to put them in jeans. It's not going to be like that X-Men line where it's like, what do you want us all in yellow spandex? But I mean, look how far we've come from that. Like, the only way you could make the X-Men in 2000 and whatever that was, was to put them in black leather. Yeah. Like, you know, post-Matrix, pre-Matrix, that Matrix zone, you had to be in black. And now the audience, now they have, they're so, like, they, the audience owns them in such a way where... They're like, here's Apocalypse. And the audience is like, no, it's not. No, it's, oh, sorry, hold on. We'll not purple on. enough. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Ivan O's, you jerk. So, uh, yeah, they're listening in a big, bad way. But that, come on, that's thrilling, dude. Yeah. Like, I grew up reading that shit. Like, I grew I, I, I put Doctor Strange in my Daredevil run. Ooh. You know, he's talking to Mephisto at one point. It was gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I, I've always loved that character. And they did a TV movie. I even watched that years ago because I was just like, oh, I, please, the idea of Stephen Strange... Now they're doing it on the big screen, dude. And I'm not like a Cumberbatch holdout, but I'm not one of those people that's like anything he does. But I think this is the movie where he claims my soul, man. Because if you nail this, like when they just mentioned <laughs> Stephen Strange in Captain America. Uh, Winter Soldier, yeah. Just they said the name. I was, was just like, like. Rattled off a bunch of like, this and this guy and this guy and Stephen Strange. What? What I rattled off was pre-cum out the tip of my <laughs> dick because I was like, they just acknowledged Stephen Strange. There's a lot more where that came from, kids. <laughs> Come jokes is what I mean. <laughs> In any event, that looks fantastic. Yeah, the, they, sh they showed a bunch of that at D23. Like you they, were there for it. I was there for Tell that. the kids about it. They stitched Don't together like a sort of, it was a trailer-ish, just lots of music over a bunch of like concept art from Doctor Strange, and it was lush, man. Really? It was just so beautiful, like all of, yeah. I've heard, uh, we were did, I did an episode of Movie Fights yesterday was over at Screen Junkies, and uh, one of the movie fights, Dormammu, was brought up, mm -hmm. and as, as a possible villain in a future Marvel movie, but word is, Dormammu may be a part of Doctor Strange. If they get actual civilians to say the word Dormammu, oh my god! Like, right? come on, dude. That's that is an epic <laughs> win for everybody. Totally. If my mother goes, "Oh, Tiger, did Doctor Strange get Dormammu?" That's <laughs> we all win, man. That's it. Terrorists can't win in a world where we all know who Dormammu is beyond <laughs> us. You know what I'm saying? Um, boy, that's yeah. I, I look forward to that in a big bad way. Are you a strange guy? Have you been a? I was never a huge strange guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I sort of came to it a little bit in the. Uh, the he's a big strange guy. Yeah, you love. Loving the strange. It was the the. So you can't wait to see it. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Brian K. Vaughn. Um, come on, well, come on, Marcos Martin miniseries. Introduce a while back. yourself and tell them how much. Come on, jump in. Yeah, come on, be be on this show. Just, just tell them, tell them, tell them uh, two shows. Yeah, you can have this one. Oh, I can have. Uh, am I looking here? Where do you want me to? Uh, Doctor Strange is my favorite. Tell and, me your uh, first. Oh, uh, I'm Matt Key. I produce. I produce the show. That's I'm the, the guy that gives us all the information and whatnot. Anyway, I, I was the guy yelling out Everett guy. Ross. Yeah. yeah, he was the one who gave us information. Uh, how, how far back you go, Strange? Uh, he was one of my first, like 10 years old. I that's, was in love with Doctor Strange. And listen, now I'm 37. True confe 37? True done. confessions right there. 27 <laughs> years of a, of a love affair. Yeah, man. oh man, it's the and best. And watch it come to life. When they cast uh, Cumberbatch, where you're like, that's the guy, or did you have somebody uh, else? I was actually there? hoping that they would get Joaquin Phoenix. I wasn't initially on board for Joaquin, but wow, then man. Uh, I, I saw, what was it, Master, and I was like, Holy he could do this. Fuck, he could do the hell out of this. But he fell away and Benedict got it. And Benedict was my initial. That was who everybody was you know, thinking. You know who I wanted? Tilda Swinton. And? 
But she's the ancient one. She's That's still ancient, fucking close, cool. But I wanted Doctor Stephanie Strange, man, because nobody's fucking stranger than Tilda Swinton. Yeah, yeah she would have killed it, man. If that would have been awesome. Be Stephanie Gabriel, Strange. Then I will absolutely take her as Doctor Stephanie. Strange. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen is confirmed to be in the film, but no one knows who he's playing. What do you guys think? played Hannibal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about him being Dormammu? If he was Dormammu, as long as his face is on fire, I'm gonna fuck. <laughs> That's Dormammu. <laughs> That's um, the best. What's yeah, the I, I can't wait. Put his face on fire. Yeah, exactly. They can bring anybody back. Macaulay Culkin, here's your moment. But you got to light your face on fire and say your name a lot in the movie. <laughs> Dormammu! Dormammu commands it. <laughs> All right, jump off. Yeah, the, the, I'm our, the, We went like this. It was like a... Height shot. <laughs> this is a descending Don't staircase. Um, all right, man. What are we going to go to mm. next? Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. We got yeah, yeah. Uh, for 50. So we got five minutes left? No, you got 10. 10? Yeah, we got five, 10 yeah. minutes left. So we can ease the pace I up. Know, Let's talk about, about Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah. I apparently, mean, you tell the story. Apparently, you know, in the way that Captain America Winter Soldier was kind of patterned after those old 70s, like conspiracy thrillers. You know, Three Days of the Condor. It was very Three Days of the Condor. And they even fucking got Redford to come back for it. Ah, (laughs) my God, I didn't piece that together. You're absolutely right. Um, Smart. Yeah, not that smart. But... (laughs) (laughs) Modest. (laughs) (laughs) They apparently have another genre template for Mm. Ant-Man and Wasp. What is it? They are keeping it close to the vest. They're being catty about it? They're being a little catty. A little... little uh, I don't care as long as they bring in Janet Von D- Dine, which I've heard mm-hmm. two names floated as possible wasps, and because Michael Douglas is coming back, yes, and so they got to tell that story that they told in flashback in the first Ant Man. Mm-hmm. They go looking for her into yeah. the sub. What was it? The sub atomic universe or whatever. Right. Um, two names, which like thrilled me. The first one was Catherine Zeta-Jones, which I thought was phenomenal. It's totally sweet. They're, for those that don't know, they're married. Yes. So how sweet is that? And everyone's like, what do you mean? How would I not know that? <laughs> Fucking idiot. Would I grow up under a rock? <laughs> yes, they're married. But So that would be kind of sweet. I know. I don't, I don't know. Have they acted together? Um, I don't think they have. Where'd they meet? It's like an acting club or some sort of shit? Uh, I want to say that it was like post Mask of Zorro, which was her big sort of stateside, like la Yeah. There was some party that he was at and saw her and did that like, who is that girl? Bring it to me. Took a saber and was like, (laughs) did an M? (laughs) Put an M on her shirt? Yeah. Um, She's already been in a superhero movie, kind of. She's Zorro. And The Phantom. Oh my God, excellent pull. She was a bad guy. She was a bad girl in the Phantom. Phantom. Yes. The thing that she doesn't like to admit, she actually did. The Phantom? Yeah, yeah. I like that movie. I I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the Lee Falk character, but Mm. I have respect for it, for the genre and whatnot. Um, And I thought they did a fine job. Like, uh, in terms of something that I had no interest in seeing, (laughs) like, I walked out going, that was pretty fun. Like, whereas The Shadow, I was invested in seeing because I love that character. And, you know, it wasn't quite no, it what it could have been. Yeah. When uh, when she was doing Mask of Zora Press, because I was at EW at the time. Um, the EW, for those that don't know, is Entertainment the Weekly. The Entertainment Weekly. Mark's dropping names. Yeah, I totally am. Uh, Playboy, <laughs> Entertainment Weekly, yeah, Hollywood, Hollywood Reporter. Reporter. He's I fucked them all. The Wired. Um yeah, the party line was from her publicity team was that this was her stateside debut, Mask of Zorro. And I'm like, nah, uh. I, I worked. <laughs> you were the one guy. I was the one guy. I was like, I worked, conference. At, I worked at Starlog, motherfuckers. I know she was in the Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> Call her out. She's like, get him out of here. He's Shows not me. allowed in. It was me. I'm building a wall between she's you like, and your resume. She's like a Trump. She's like, maybe he needed to get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> get him out of here. Talk about my past. Um, all right, so that's one yeah. cool uh, yeah. prospect of, uh, of Janet yeah. Bondi playing uh, mm. Catherine Sage Jones. The other, mm. equally as kind of like, <gasps> Michelle Pfeiffer. I know. AKA our Catwoman. Totally. You know, back when we were kids. Not in, pre Anne Hathaway Catwoman. Pre. Yeah. Post Julie Newmar and Eartha Kitt. And pre. Pre, uh, what's her name? Holly Berry. Yeah. <laughs> if that counts as a Catwoman. It's kind of a little bit does. Um, but yes, this, this would, uh, that's. That's adorable. So sweet. And also, technically, Marvel stealing Somebody from the DC stable, kind of deep D- DC stable in terms <laughs> of like that's old DC, but I don't know. In that weird, they still like to play. You know, we don't like the direct competition, right? You know, and stuff like that. In a world where they still play up the it's, Marvel versus DC, that is a tiny little move, man. That's a tiny little sting. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm, take your I cat. I dig it. I mean, and I wonder if the, the the pattern they're going after is a little bit of like 
screwball comedy, mm. maybe. Like, if they're going to steal, like, Preston Sturges or little Billy Wilder in there. Well, then Peyton Reed's the man for the job. What yeah. was that movie, Down With Love, he uh -huh. did? If you did that, minus the songs, that there's a nice totally. template. And he you crushed win. that. That was a wonderful movie. Um, all right, man. Well, let's talk about, uh, let's finish up with uh, yeah. the big... News of the week for those uh, you know who are interested in the Netflix series over Marvel Marvel's Netflix series and they've been mm -hmm. crushing it. We've talked about it on the podcast Daredevil. Like, we fucking sucked <laughs> off Daredevil on the podcast. Jessica Jones, we hate that out and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but we talked about like, hey man, what what's where's going Iron on? Fist? Where's Iron Fist? As Mark said, mm. there he is, hey. Danny Rand himself, man, one of uh, Marvel's old '70s favorites, mm -hmm. part half of the Heroes for Hire team. We've already met Luke. Cage yeah, in, 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 uh, in Jessica Jones' world. So there were rumors that, like, you know, I don't know, rumors, like people on the internet were writing stories like maybe, maybe Marvel can't crack this code, particularly blah, blah, right. blah. Now they've just announced what? They got a showrunner, a guy named Scott Buck, who was on Six Feet Under and Dexter. My name's Has Scott been, Buck, yeah, and I like, like to, to fuck. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to uh, Fuck Iron Fist. I'm Iron Fist him. <laughs> I assume he likes to fuck. Yeah, he's got it. Most don't. people do. Yeah. He's you know what? He's alive. It'd so. be amazing if he came on the show and he's like, I'm suing you because I don't like to fuck. No, and you I'm put words in kind of mouth. asexual. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Not everyone does. That's why I get good jobs. Because I work. I don't I'm fuck. indifferent to fucking. <laughs> um, so this guy's got the gig. This guy's got the gig. You know, but now the, the next question is. What do you do? Six feet under? Six feet under and Dexter. All right, well, they pulled uh, the showrunner for Jessica Jones. She also was on Dexter. She was also well. on Dexter, and she wrote the Twilight. Well, that movies. Dexter, that Dexter bench is deep. It's not bad. People pulling from it. Yeah, yeah. Marvel, particularly, Marvel seems to like, like, you know, well, think Marvel. about it. Dexter was a superhero show. It's kind of Batman mm -hmm. without a mask, and he just killed people. More the killing. This is, this is killing, not jerking off. Yeah, stabbing. Might have done something of that, too. I didn't Probably. see every episode. But he stabbed the shit There's out of plastic him. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he was like, I could kill him, and the blood could flow, or the jism could go arcing and stuff. <laughs> um, no, I, it was definitely, it seems like that's a show you could pull easily from because they already know how to do episodic. They already know how to do mm. ongoing mythology yeah. mystery. And they know how to do genre. Genre. Yeah. And and it was kind of comic book without being comic book. Totally. Superhero without being superhero, I should say. Yeah. So now the big question that's kind of rolling around the internet is who's going to be Iron Fist? Danny Rand. Danny Rand. Now, in the comics, mm. Danny Rand, Caucasian? Yeah, white guy. <laughs> because in the grand tradition of comics and, you know, imperialism, um, <laughs> colonialism, <laughs> it had always been, and it's gone on since the shadow, basically. White guy goes to an Asian country, mm. learns a bunch of shit, learns it better than the Asian people do, bring it back to the States, and fights crime with it. How so the, I, look, I could go with some of that, but the... Learns it better than we know it somehow. Yeah, we teach him, but he somehow surpasses. Yeah, us. yeah. So it's the Doctor Strange. Yeah. it's the Shadow. It's Batman. In it's cold. yeah. It's it's the thing that happens, and there is a good sense that maybe this could be a corrective to that. There's a way to cast an Asian American to mm -hmm. play Danny Rand, and still get kind of the best of both worlds. You know, and you get to tell the story that Marvel hasn't told yet, which is odd given that it's set in New York, which is the immigrant story. Uh -uh. Which is the, like, let's let's build that texture of New York. Let's talk about a third-generation Asian-American, maybe even biracial, if you still want to keep the Rand family line as mm. it goes down. If you ever want to do the Seven Cities of Heaven tournament that, that Fraction and, and Brubaker did, you can still have all that. Mm. But also tell the story of a guy who's caught between two worlds, of a guy who is torn between his Asian heritage and his American heritage and is torn between not fitting in in a place where he's seen as a foreigner, given the world we're in right now where we apparently love Muslims but don't want to have them in the country, talking about what it's like to be an American but still be foreign while being on the soil. Like, you just, I'm, I want to watch that. Like, <laughs> like that's, a, that's a nice undercurrent to a show where he's like, and he punches people in the face with, <laughs> with a magical magic. fist. <laughs> you know, like but that's just, smart, man. Why not do that? That yeah. would seem to be the smart part. And from a purely business perspective, given that we're in a world in which we are setting movies in China, we are incorporating Chinese characters that don't ever appear in the original source material because mm. China will pay for stuff, because China has the biggest single market of like emerging moviegoers and, and pop culture watchers. Why not? Why wouldn't you do that? Smart call. You know. But is I, there anyone, is there word of any kind out there? Has anybody heard anything? You know, there there have been some casting rumors going on. There's, there's a couple of reporters who are digging into stuff here and there, but trying to find out who's already met for it. Okay. And at one point, there were Asian actors who sat down to talk about it. But nobody knows if anybody's pulled the trigger. Quickly, before we jump out of here, 
cast it? Who would who would you go for? I mean, for me, it's you know, given that there is no bench of Asian actors who are like you know, there's no name Asian actor you're gonna put it in right. aside from like you know the guy from Walking Dead who seems to still have a job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for the minute, for for now. You know, it's like so Lucille's coming. That's all I'm saying. Find somebody new. Yeah. Find make make a star. Cast around him. Like you know, build up that supporting cast. Make him fabulous. But nobody knew who Charlie Cox was really before Daredevil. Like Marvel is your star. Marvel is why people show up. So you don't need a face. Did you hear that? Go to that two shot. This is why it. This is why you team up with a Mark Bernard man and drink. It's that as well. Smartest <laughs> motherfucker in the room. Uh, that's it, man. We wrap up all the Marvel news uh, for this portion of Fat Man on Batman come uh, later in the week and we'll do the DC portion and then the third portion will be everything else which of course includes Star Wars and whatnot yes. but uh, for those who are like where about the podcast podcast will still exist don't worry about that go to smodcast.com that'll always be there um, subscribe to this channel if you want to keep watching this get the alerts and you let them know when the show come up and whatnot uh, YouTube slash Kevin Smith I believe is the title and whatnot hey thanks to the good folks at Defy Media who put all this together man. it's so look, pretty look at this this is crazy you get a d- dopey dream and suddenly you're there <laughs> and uh, and uh, follow Mark Bernardin at Mark Bernardin uh, I'm at that Kevin Smith uh, come back uh, in, uh, I guess in a couple days yeah we're gonna do these every other day or something like that for the the, the DC stuff man mm. uh, come back to our fat cave same fat time same fat channel Smodcast well we don't say that anymore Ooh. YouTube slash Kevin Smith dot <laughs> <laughs> com Hey, thanks for watching Fat Man on Batman, turkeys. You want to see more of this? Subscribe to my channel. Click below. Tell your friends. Join us in the Fat Cave. All sizes welcome. All are welcome. Crossover children. All are welcome.